In this video, I'm gonna talk about a very common misconception when it comes to Kotlin coroutines on Android. And that misconception is, if you launch a coroutine in the main thread, can you freeze the UI? And just as kind of a, a, a glimpse into what we're gonna be taking a look at here, yes, you can freeze the UI, and I'm gonna show you how you can do that. So fundamentally, uh, this problem really stems from uh, how coroutines work. By default, you probably won't freeze the UI if you started a coroutine in the main thread, but it's possible that you freeze the UI. So let's look at, a, at an example here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. On the screen here, I have a demo application. It just has a button and a text view in the middle of the view. If I click the button, it increments a counter and it displays that counter in the text view. Pretty simple. Now let's take a look at the code. So the activity is very simple. Like I said, there's a counter, a button. When you click the button, it increments the counter. Pretty straightforward. Now inside of main, what I'm talking about with freezing the UI thread is if I was to launch a new coroutine scope and launch a new coroutine within that scope on the main thread. So notice that I'm referencing the main thread in the coroutine scope, meaning that, that any coroutines that are launched inside of here will start in the main thread. Uh, just to show you, I can do print line and I'll print out the current thread. So now what I'm talking about is if I was to write a delay here, say of let's do 3000 milliseconds, so three seconds, will that freeze the UI? Some of you might think yes, some of you might think no. Fundamentally, this comes down to do you understand how coroutines work? So let's run this and take a look if this freezes our UI. So right away the app launches and notice that I can click the button, I can increment the counter, nothing is freezing the UI, everything is working as it's supposed to. And if I take a look at the log, we can see that the current thread printed is the main thread. So what's happening here? For those of you who thought that this will freeze the main thread, what, what exactly is happening here? So if you don't understand how coroutines work, you might think that this was gonna freeze the thread. So the way coroutines work is uh, they're not actually threads. They are launched within threads, but they're not threads themselves. They're kind of like isolated environments that exist within that thread. So when I'm calling coroutine scope main.launch, I'm launching a coroutine within the main thread. It doesn't mean that it's occupying the entire main thread. It just means that it's launching a, an isolated job within the main thread. So for example, just to kind of showcase this a little bit more to you, if I was to do thread.sleep and three, sleep the thread for 3000 milliseconds, that would definitely freeze the thread. Because what's happening here is I'm not delaying just the coroutine, I'm delaying the entire thread. So like I said, a coroutine is like an isolated job within a thread. But if I call thread.sleep, I'm gonna sleep that entire thread. So let's run this and take a look. So I'm gonna press Shift F10 to run this again. Now notice that when the app launches, the button isn't even coming into view. The UI is completely frozen until that, that delay is done and then I can click the button. So that is definitely freezing the thread. So now I've shown you an example where you could freeze the thread by sleeping the entire thing. But I've also shown you an example where we are just uh, delaying a, a single isolated coroutine and that does not freeze the UI thread. Now I'm gonna show you a way that you could freeze the UI thread by, um, by not using thread.sleep. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna launch a whole bunch of coroutines. I'm gonna launch 100,000 coroutines and I'm going to write a delay inside of each coroutine and we'll see if that freezes the UI. So essentially what we're doing here is I'm trying to overload the main thread with coroutines. So as I said, we we a coroutine is like an isolated job inside of whatever thread you decide to run it into. But if I run 100,000 jobs inside of the main thread, chances are it's probably gonna freeze. So let's take a look and, and see if we can freeze the UI. Okay, so let's let's make this a little bit, let's look, make this look a little bit more practical. So I'm gonna create a new function called uh, do network request. You know, we don't have any architecture in this example. We don't have a repository. We don't have a view model. We don't have anything, but I wanna make this look kind of more realistic. So I'm gonna create a, a suspend function. So this is actually gonna be a private suspend function, suspend function. And this is going to run a coroutine inside of it. So I'm gonna do print line. Uh, I'll say starting network request. So we're just pretending that I'm gonna try and get something from the network. Uh, I'm gonna write a delay in here just to kind of simulate the time it would take to get something from the network. Probably it wouldn't take 5,000 milliseconds, probably more realistically it would take like uh, at the most 3,000 milliseconds. And then when that coroutine is finished, I'll say like finished network request with an exclamation mark. So now this is just, we're just pretending that we're getting something from the network. So now I'm gonna come up into our main function and I'm gonna call this function 100,000 times. So I'm gonna say for i in one, two, 100,000, whoops, meant to do an underscore there. I wanna call this, I wanna launch a brand new coroutine and do a network request. So to launch a brand new coroutine, I'm gonna say launch and call do network request. So what this is gonna do here is I'm gonna launch a parent coroutine inside of the main scope, so on the main thread. So this will be like the parent, the parent job. 
And then within the parent job, I'm going to launch a bunch of children jobs. So 100,000 children jobs. So I'm launching 100,000 coroutines inside of the main thread. That's basically what we're doing. And each one of those coroutines is going to delay for 3000 milliseconds. So now, um, now we expect that I don't know, maybe the, the main thread will freeze, maybe it won't. It depends on the load. This is a pretty heavy load. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna press Shift F10 to run this again. I'll bring up the log. And there we go. You can see that the main thread is being frozen. The UI is not showing anything. Nothing is happening. So, so at the end of the day, what I was trying to show you here is by default, writing a delay in the main thread. So if I was to not run this 100,000 times, if I was just to run this, you know, one time, you know, do network request, the UI would not freeze because it's it's creating a job within the main thread. And yes, it is it is delaying that job, but it's not going to delay the entire thread. But if I was to run 100,000 of those jobs, then the main thread can become overwhelmed and you can freeze it. So just to kind of finish off here, let's run just one of these jobs and see what happens. So I've commented out the loop. We got do network request here. I'm going to press shift F10. I'm going to open up the log. I'm going to clear it, bring the app on the screen. And there we go. It says current thread, starting network request, and then finishing network request. The UI never froze. It worked just fine. So um, yeah, I guess the message I want to, I want to end with here is don't take take this example and think that you can do network requests on the main thread. That's not what I'm trying to show you here. I'm trying to show you, uh, trying to give you an example of how coroutines are working behind the scenes. They are not threads. They, they are jobs within threads. And yes, it is possible to, to run so much, so many jobs, such a heavy, uh, with, with a heavy burden that you can freeze the entire thread. And it wouldn't matter if I was using, you know, the IO dispatcher, if I was using whatever dispatcher, you can still freeze the thread that the jobs are running on. So you, that's why you want to try and distribute the work that you do with coroutines. Although chances are you're not going to end up freezing an entire thread with, with a job. It would have to be a pretty heavy job, like running a hundred thousand coroutines or something like that. So that's it for this video. If you liked the video, do not forget to like it. Do not forget to leave a comment. And if you want to know more about coroutines, more about Android development in general, go to codingwithmitch.com. I have tons of different courses from totally beginner level to pretty high level, I would say, courses. We got courses from, from uh, stuff on Room Persistence Library, Retrofit, Dagger 2. Uh, architecture is kind of what I specialize in. My personal favorite architecture these days is Model View Intent Architecture. And the most popular course on my website right now is probably the Powerful Android Apps with Jetpack Architecture course. I show you things like uh, we go through Kotlin, Coroutines, Navigation Components, which is the newest way to navigate with fragments on Android. Dagger 2, MVI Architecture, as I said, which is my favorite. The Repository Pack. Pattern. That's with MVI architecture, retrofit, room persistence library, tons of stuff. And recently I've been working on refactoring it to include Kotlin channels and flows. So tons of new stuff, basically all the newest stuff you could possibly use on Android. Check it out. It's a good website. You'll learn a lot. And if you're ever curious about what people are saying about it, go to more and go to testimonials up here and you can read some stuff about what people are saying. Thanks again. And I'll see you in the next video.